Welcome to Hornbill TV. I'm Lishni Chasti. Now the headlines. In a major development for the ongoing Naga peace process, the government of India and the Nikki Sumi led National Socialist Council of Nagaland (NSCNK) are ready to sign a fresh ceasefire agreement on September 8th in New Delhi. Community groups in Churachandpur district of Manipur are protesting the Manipur Legislative Assembly Speaker's decision to include nine valley-based MLAs in the Hill Area Committee. Aziz Qureshi has been booked for sedation by Uttar Pradesh police for his alleged derogatory remarks against Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath. However, Qureshi said that his statement has been misquoted to harm him politically. Governor of Nagaland, Aran Ravi, today released a special cover on the Naga tree tomato, which is a geographical indication GI tagged product of Nagaland. Now the news in details. In a major development for the ongoing Naga peace process, the government of Nag government of India and the Nikki Sumi led National Socialist Council of Nagaland and SCNK are ready to sign a fresh ceasefire agreement on September 8th in New Delhi. According to Hindustan Times, the chairman of ceasefire monitoring group, Lieutenant General Retard ASBD, is already in Delhi preparing the groundwork with the Union Home Ministry for the new ceasefire agreement while a team of Nikki led NSCNK will be leaving for Delhi from Nagaland on Monday. Nikki Sumi, a trusted general of late SS Kaplang, is reportedly said to have taken the step to enter a fresh ceasefire with the centre, heeding to the voice of the Naga people who want peace. He is stated to be out to be of opinion that all Naga negotiating groups could come together if the government of India is sincere in its efforts to settle an honourable and acceptable solution. The NSCNK in 2015 unilaterally abrogated its 2001 ceasefire agreement with the centre following which the Union Home Ministry declared the group as a banned outfit and an unlawful association. R.N. Ravi released a special cover on the Naga tree tomato, which is a geographical indication GI tagged product of Naglan. Speaking at the event of Raj Bhawan Kohima on Monday, Ravi stressed on the enormous diversity that the state holds and felt that the state government is not aware of this diversity in Naglan. It falls on the state government to identify such unique products, and after identification, GI tagging should be done, said Ravi. The governor felt that not only agricultural or horticultural products should be tagged, but also man-made products like handicrafts from the state should be identified. If there is appreciation for such products, more demand would be there, Ravi said, and added that this would lead to economic growth. The government of Nagaland is not aware of its diversity. The scale, the spectrum of diversity that we have here, the kind of products. Unfortunately, we have very limited visibility. And I think here, the role of the state government is important. If a product is GI tagged, then that product cannot be duplicated by people from elsewhere. Now we find we have so much. Now I'm really wondering why is only the Chakisan embroidery or so shawl is one? When we know that there is so much. And even when you say Chakisan, there are so many variations even in, in that Chakisan area on so many products. So I think it is the it falls upon the state government to identify such 
products, agricultural, horticultural, or human made, your art and craft, which are a special, a special to this place, and try and go for GI tagging. Special covers are released to mark a significant event or highlight products by the Department of Posts. Speaking to Hornbill TV, the Postmaster General, Northeast 2 Region, Som Kamai, expressed elation at the special cover release of the Naga Tree Tomato and said that GI tagging prevents the unauthorized use of a product by a third party. Even. And once the uh, special cover, uh, and in this case the Nagatri tomato, has been released, it is uh, kept in the, all the philatelic bureau of the country. That means covering all the states of India. And <coughs> we, have, we print around uh, in significant numbers to, to be displayed and to be sold across the, uh, India. And that's how uh, the publicity and people have the recall value. And secondly, this uh, special cover will also be displayed in our National Philately Museum at New Delhi. So it become a permanent part of our collection. So it's a significant event. And people will now identify Nagatri Tomato as geotag from Nagaland. So that recall value and also the publicity that which our Honorable Governor was also mentioning, that increases and the publicity uh, we are just helping actually the state government to highlight that product from all the northeast India. So from from <coughs> Nagaland, we have done three: Chakisang shawl, Naga mircha by Honorable CM here released, and now here. So we hope that the state government identify more and come up with it, and so that we can also give us uh, publicity to all. We are just a vehicle to give publicity and. Uh, highlight the importance of that. The event was part of a series of special covers on GI tagged products of the Northeast, including Nagaland. It may be mentioned that two special covers on Naga, Mecha, and Chakasang Shawl were also released last month by month by Department of Posts. Taliban spokesperson Zabiullah Mujahid said that the war in Afghanistan is over and an announcement about the formation of the new government will be made in the next few days. Taliban spokesperson Zabiullah Mujahid said that the war in Afghanistan is over and an announcement about the formation of the new government will be made in the next few days. He added, a new government will be announced in the next few days. Earlier today, the Taliban had announced that Panjshir became the last Afghan province to fall under the control of the Taliban. However, resistance forces immediately rejected the claim, saying that their leader Ahmad Mossad will soon make a statement. During the presser, the Taliban spokesperson informed that technical teams from Qatar, Turkey and the UAE are working to restart operations at Kabul airport. People should know that the invaders will never reconstruct our country and it is the responsibility of our people to do it themselves. Our Beijing's role in the reconstruction of the country, Mujahid said, the Taliban wants good relations with the world. China is a big economic power and is very important for Afghanistan and much needed support for reconstruction and development. Last week, Pakistan intelligence chief Faiz Hamid took an emergency trip to Kabul to reportedly resolve an evolving internal crisis in the Taliban after reports emerged about a clash between factions in which the group co-founder Mullah Abdul Ghani Baradar suffered injuries. Pakistan repeatedly asked to visit Kabul and we recently agreed. They are worried about the release of prisoners, those who belong to Pakistan and want to carry out attacks in Pakistan. We assure them that no one will be allowed to threaten any country from Afghanistan, the spokesperson said. Karnataka government has decided to ban online gambling games or betting by amending the Karnataka Police Act of 1963, excluding lottery. The amended bill will be tabled in the upcoming session of the legislature, which is slated to commence on September 13 and last year September 24. This comes after the state government received several complaints regarding cyber fraud. Karnataka cabinet on Saturday decided to impose a ban on online games that include transactions from electronic devices like mobile phones and computers. The drafted bill seeks to amend the Karnataka Police Act of 1963. 
The members of the National Students' Union of India have been detained by the Delhi police on Monday outside the residence of Union Education Minister Damendra Pradhan. The students were detained as they were protesting over an alleged IIT JEE means 2021 fraud. The student protesters reportedly raised slogans against both the Education Minister and the central government led by BJP. On September 2nd, the Central Bureau of Investigation initiated raids at 20 locations across the country as they were informed of alleged irregularities being committed by a private coaching institute in the JEE Means Exam 2021. As a result, the CBI arrested seven people from a single private consultancy company as they were allegedly charging rupees 15 lakh per student to guarantee seats in the top engineering institutes of the country. A CBI court has sent the firm's directors Siddharth Krishna and Vishambar Mani Tripathi and an employee Ritik Singh to CBI custody until September 9th in connection with the alleged irregularities in the JEE main exam. While searching the company offices in Delhi, Pune, Jamshedpur, Indore and Bangalore, CBI seized several laptops, personal computers, transaction histories and multiple documents like provisional degree certificates of students. Others who were also taken in custody will be tried in front of a magistrate later. With Kerala constantly reporting more than half of the country's daily COVID-19 cases, senior Bharatiya Janata Party leader Kumanam Raja Sekharan on Monday criticized the Kerala government for the spike in COVID-19 cases in the state and accused Pinarayi Vijayan government of being a spectator and not safeguarding people's interests. More than half of the country's daily COVID-19 cases, senior Bhartiya Janata Party leader Kunmanam Rajesh Karan on Monday criticized the Kerala government for the spike in COVID-19 cases in the state and accused Pinarayi Vijayan government of being a spectator and not safeguarding people's interest. Raja Shekharan said they have not taken any action to prevent the COVID pandemic. In this period, the government is standing like a spectator. It's a very pathetic condition. The government is not rising to the level, he added. At the same time, the central government has given so much of assistance and amount they have released. But the state government is not taking care about protecting the interests of lives of, of the people who are suffering from this COVID. India reported 38,948 new COVID-19 cases in the last 24 hours, taking the overall daily to 3 crore 30 lakhs 27,621, informed the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Of the 38,948 new cases, Kerala alone has reported 26,701 cases in the last 24 hours. The trend of less than 50,000 daily new cases is being reported for 71 consecutive days now. Community groups in Churachanpur district of Manipur are protesting the Manipur Legislative Assembly Speaker's decision to include nine valley-based MLAs in the Hill Area Committee. The protest was called on the occasion of Chief Minister N. Birin Singh's Go to Hill program, which is a routine program during which the Chief Minister and high-ranking officials visit the Hill districts in turn. Scheduled Go to Heal program was on the 6th of September and the district chosen by the state government was Churachanpur district. Ahead of Chief Minister and Birin Singh's visit to Churachanpur, the Cookie Students' Organization and other bodies called for non cooperation. A press statement released by the KSO stated that the tribal populace of Churachanpur district stands strong against the anti tribal attitudes of the Birin led Manipur government. Not tabling the HSC bill of 2021 and the subsequent move to include nine valley MLAs in the HSC in contravention of Article 371C of the Indian Constitution and Rules of Business of the State Assembly is anti tribal, it stated. The student bodies and associations in Churachunpur district conducted a meeting today and adopted a resolution to declare non cooperation against the government of Manipur until the HAC bill is passed and the order to include nine valley MLAs in the Hill Area Committee by the Speaker of the Manipur Legislative Assembly is revoked, it was informed. Another press statement released by the All Tribal Students Union of Manipur stated appreciation for the stand taken by the Cookie Students Organization of Churachandpur and Mar Students 
Association of Chirachanpur in declaring non-cooperation against the government to protest the government's refusal to introduce the ADC Bill 2021 in the State Assembly and the Manipur Assembly Speaker's orders. The Enforcement Directorate has issued a lookout notice against NCP leader and former Maharashtra Home Minister Anil Deshmukh in connection with a money laundering case. Said that the lookout circular was issued to prevent Deshmukh from fleeing the country. He has skipped various summons issued by the ED in the case that forced him to resign from the post of Maharashtra Home Minister in April. The move comes as the Supreme Court had refused to offer Deshmukh interim relief from coercive action in the lawsuit last month. Deshmukh had moved the Mumbai Hard Court on September 2, seeking to squash the agency's summons. The plea, however, was not taken up for hearing immediately. The ED has still now issued five summons to Deshmukh, asking him to appear before it for questioning. However, Deshmukh skipped every summons, saying he would be seeking appropriate remedy available under law. ED registered its money laundering case against Deshmukh and other based on a corruption case filed against him by the Central Bureau of Investigation. Deshmukh is accused of allegedly misusing his post while serving as Home Minister. It is also alleged that a leader to dismiss police officer Sachin Ways collected rupees 4.72 crore from various bars and restaurants in Mumbai. The money was allegedly laundered to the Nagpur best Sri Sai Shikshan Sansat, an educational trust controlled by Deshmukh's family. That's all we have for now. Stay tuned for more news with Hornbill TV.